I'm Lauren, I work with KPMG. We are so proud to be involved with the KPMG Children's Book Ireland Awards this year. I'm here today to help you with the very important task of being a junior juror. So I recently read The Boldness of Betty by Anna Carey. This is the story of Betty. It's written as her memoir. And Betty is a 14 year old girl living in 1913 Dublin in the North Strand. So the story starts with Betty needing to leave school to go out to work to support her family. And um, she didn't have the option of going to secondary school the way we all do today. Um, so she had to go out and she has to start working in a cake shop. But this is a period of tremendous social change um, and she ends up going on strike. So everybody who was in a union in Dublin ended up going on strike in the Dublin lockout of 1913. And Betty tells us a little bit about this story. So today what we're going to do is we are going to look up and learn a little bit about people, real people who lived um, in Dublin at this time. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the 1911 census on the National Archives. And I have the option of looking at a street. So I thought it would be fun to see who was actually living on Betty Street in 1911. So Betty lived uh, in Strandville Road, the North Strand. So, let's see what happens. Who will we find? So, I'm going to have a look at the Lennon family. So, here on the website, it's very handy because we can see all of the information is actually typed out um, for ease of use. But what I think will be a bit more fun is if we look at the actual census image. So this is the handwritten form that would have been filled in by the family actually in 1911. So we can still see it today, which is amazing. So we have Richard Lennon. He is the head of the family. So he is a Roman Catholic. The entire family is Roman Catholic and they can all read and write. So that is great. Oh, actually we see there's one daughter, Christina, who can read, um, but not, oh, cannot. She cannot read or write. And she's aged 33. She's the only member of the family. Um, all of the others um, can. So we have Richard Lennon, who's the head of the family, his wife, Mary, um, and we can see then Patrick is their son, who's 36, Christina, who's 33, Richard, 31, Lizzie, who's 29, Kate, 27, Jane, 23, Anne, 21, and John is 19. So, oh my goodness. How many children is that? Two, four, six, eight, eight children. Goodness, it must be wonderful to have a big family, but I don't think we see it that much these days. We can see, actually, that the head of the household, Richard and Mary, they've been married for 40 years. So goodness, that's a long time. We also see that they had 12 children born alive, um, and eight of those children are still living. So that means four children um, died before adulthood, which um, you know, Betty does mention um, that a lot of families on her street, even her own mum, had a baby that didn't, didn't live till adulthood. And um, thankfully we don't see that as much today. Um, and we can see that actually all eight of their children um, are single. And it looks like Christina, um, the only member of the family that cannot read or write, um, they made a note to say that she has special needs. 
so it might just be the case that um, she didn't get the help that, it, that people have um, access to today. Um, oh yes, and we even see um, their occupation, their job. So it looks like Richard was a shipmate, shipwright it looks like. Patrick, his son, is a labourer. And um, this also looks to be Richard, their son, is a carpenter. And um, Lizzie is a French polisher. And Kate is a shop assistant. It's probably a bit like Betty. Um, and Jane is a school teacher. Whereas John, 19 year old, the youngest, he's an apprentice. So it seems like they're all very well educated. Um, so it sounds like this was a very lucky family, doesn't it? Um, I hope you enjoyed looking at the census at home. Um, there's an absolute wealth of information. It's great and really interesting to look at how different people lived and what, what different families looked like back then. And I suppose I just wish all the junior jurors the very best of luck with their decision.